This is the first of three videos that will help you assemble and test the I2C mini terminal. The first video, this one, is the I2C mini terminal assembly part one. The next is I2C mini terminal assembly part two. And then the final one is using the I2C mini terminal. Well, now let's build the Smiley Micro's I2C mini terminal. This project kit comes in a plastic bag and the parts will <clears throat> scatter if you're not careful when you uh, empty them out. So put them in a saucer or a little bowl. Got my smiley face bowl here. See how the parts are falling out. And once you've got the parts in a bowl, say so move it out of the way so we can begin our soldering. The first thing we're going to solder is the socket for our little AVR. Uh, it's pre-programmed with an Arduino compatible bootloader, the OptiBoot, and it also has the I2C mini terminal application uh, preloaded for you. We'll put that on in a minute. First, let's put the socket in here. And we'll notice on our printed circuit board that there's a little divot on this end. That indicates where pin 1 is. Pin 1 is at this point. We want to put the socket. The socket also has a little divot. We'll start it off in the same place. Carefully put it in to the holes. And once it's in, turn it over. And what I do is I tack down the first pin, tack down a pin, we make sure that the socket is still on this board, not crooked or anything. We got this one on this corner, now let's do one on the other corner. Again, inspect it and make sure that everything is still flat and square. Once it's flat and square, you can begin, <clears throat> begin the process of just going down and soldering each pin on here. And let's jump ahead after we have this soldered. Now, we jump ahead. All right, take a look at your solder joints and make sure they look something like this, that they're slumped and kind of conical. And at the, okay, now that that's completed, let's put the clock crystal. This is our clock crystal. And I will bend the wire a little bit this way, a little bit that way, to hold it in position. And then I solder. Okay, after you solder the uh, crystal, you want to clip these with flush clippers like this. You clip the leg, and this leg stayed on to the clipper. <clears throat> but you need to wear safety glasses because often these things will pop off and this little pin right here will go flying through the air and it might impale you in the eye, which would be very painful and possibly blind you. So carefully snip these off like that. And that one went flying. Now, the next thing we're going to put on here is the uh, capacitors. And notice that there are five capacitors in the kit. Three of them have 104 written on them. They are larger, and they are <clears throat> the 100 nanofarad capacitors that are used for bypass power supply bypass uh, in the design. These two smaller capacitors are 22 picofarad, and they're used with the crystal. Now, it's possible that some of the kits, they may be slightly different sizes or different colors, so make sure you check that one of them has the 104. And get a magnifying glass out and look on these smaller ones for the 22. When you get them, the smaller ones go on either side of the clock crystal. Okay, press it all the way in like that. And then bend these legs a little bit 
like so. Kind of to hold it in position. Uh, we'll do the next one like this. And we'll hold that in position like so. All right, now we'll solder these capacitors on. And we will be sure and clip them with our safety glasses, just like we saw how to do with the and clipping them off. Okay, clip them off, clip them off, hear them go swinging through the air, make sure you got your safety glasses on. Okay, now the next, okay, now we deal with the 100 nanofarad capacitors, the one with the 104 on them. There's a minor problem in that some of these uh, have uh, bent legs, and the legs need to be straight. So I use a flat nose plier, and I just bend them straight. After you've uh, bent the legs on the 100 nanofarad capacitors so that they're narrow like this, you put the one at that position, and then another one up here. And then the third one next to it. Okay. Because these legs are bent, they'll tend to stay in a position. Uh, you don't need to <coughs> bend them anymore. Just solder them in place. And then put on your safety glasses. You may have heard those hit the wall. That's why you uh, that's why you wear the safety glasses. They go winging off pretty fast. Okay. Okay, next let's place the push buttons uh, onto the printing circuit board. You notice that these buttons look square and they are certainly square on top. These on the bottom form a more rectangular aspect. And you'll notice that the holes for these are also more of a rectangle than a square. So it's, uh, you can't really place them wrong. Notice how these uh, legs are more rectangular. They go in like this. And one of the things you need to be careful about is keeping them centered. When you press them in, press them down, they'll tend to try to go to one side or the other. So just press them in, not real snug, just loosely, and make sure that they're good and centered. Um, what? Okay, now they're in. Make sure they're all relatively flat, relatively centered, and you can set them on the back, press them down. All right, use your fingernails, push them in a little bit. Push them down a little bit. Each one. Make sure they're snug and square. It's possible for you to solder these things in when they're a little off-centered. It won't affect the way it works, but it will affect the way they look. So, Once you have the push buttons flat, and they'll stay on there when you turn it over, and then you want to solder each of the... Now, once you get them soldered down, Inspect them. Make sure you don't have any solder bridges between some of these closer pins. And that's your buttons.